Good evening, everyone. Today, I want to talk to you about. Uh, better. Today, I want to talk to you about uh, this little piece of software that I wrote for myself a few months ago while I was writing a, a project proposal for the European Commission. So, this is a little bit of the line. First of all, <coughs> I'm going to give uh, a brief overview about the typical project uh, structure, since I guess that uh, not everyone here wrote project proposals. Then, uh, in this way, I will be able to describe the each, the problem that I wanted to solve. And uh, we'll talk a bit about the code, about the plugin structure that I guess it's a, a cool feature of this uh, program. And then, uh, work in progress, what I'm doing right now. So, you have your project. You have people working it. And uh, the work in the project is uh, split into work packages. You could have, for example, hardware design, software design, communication, management, stuff like that. Inside every work package, you have task. So, for example, hardware development can have hardware design, prototype development, uh, industrialization. And uh, the tasks makes deliverable that are stuff that you can share, you can show to someone else. It can be a prototype, a document, a website, a video. And uh, while the project evolves, it reaches some milestones that are moments in time when you, you say, OK, so far, so good. Now what? For example, you can have a uh, work package uh, hardware development. Inside that, the task, the um, prototype development gives you a, a deliverable a prototype. And when you have a prototype, you say, OK, we have a prototype. Now, what we do? OK? This is more or less the basic structure. So you have uh, your idea for a research project. You want to, to be funded. You need to describe it to the European Commission in order to get your funding. And how do you do that? Well, there is a format that's more or less standard. If you wrote a research proposal, you know that. You have work package cards with the name work package, the effort of every partner, when you start, when you end, what you're going to do, and the tasks with start and date, and so on and so on, and deliver and so on. Besides the work package cards, you are also asked to produce some summaries, such as, for example, the list of deliverables, the list of milestones, and in the case of European project, a summary of the effort by, by work package, by partners, and so on and so on. And last but not least, a graphical description of your project. What is the problem here? This makes sense, okay? We can agree. What is the problem? The problem is that this description is uh, reasonable, as may be. It's redundant. There is lots of cross-linking, cross-references. And if you change something, you have a tsunami of change to do. For example, suppose you add three months to task 1.3. Then work package 1 needs to last three months more. A work package 2 and 3 that starts when work package 1 ends uh, needs to start later. And the task inside them needs to start later. And the deliverable will get later. And the milestone will change. And the effort will change. And you need to change uh, everything here, here. Maybe the milestone will also change order. 
because if one milestone gets later, maybe a new one gets the first. The first. So it's a, it's a mess, okay? <laughs> Honestly, I don't like this, uh, this uh, kind of... Uh, and, uh, well, you know, okay, but uh, you just need to pay a little bit of attention. I don't want to pay attention. I have the deadline that's creeping day after day, closer and closer and closer. I have a page limit of 15 pages that's way too short. I don't want to pay attention. I want a software that pays attention for me. That's why I love coding in ADA. The compiler pays attention for me. <laughs> so I wrote this piece of software. You can imagine how much I hate this stuff uh, since I wrote a software for just doing one project. <laughs> and this uh, is uh, the internal structure of the code. It's very simple. You have a parser that takes uh, the project uh, in uh, a simple format, not redundant, brings it into an internal format. This uh, handled by this block, more about this later, and the result is given to processors that do something. In my case, it generates some files that include in the project. The nice part here is that parser and processor are not fixed, but are implemented as plugins. What that means? It means uh, that uh, I have an sorry, uh, I have uh, as uh, um, inside the code a, an abstract parser that's in an interface. For those of you that are not uh, familiar with this part of ADA, is more or less an abstract class, roughly. If you want a new parser, you derive from this uh, interface provide a constructor, a function create, and a function parse. That's it. Then you register your new parser with this function. The user, when calls the program, specify the parser to be used inside the command line. At the moment, there is only one parser. That uh, parse this is a format here. I'm not going to detail, it's very simple. I want just to point out two, two stuff. First, uh, the date here, for example, is not a number, it's an expression. This uh, allows you to specify, for example, that uh, one task needs to start when uh, another task ends, in a very simple way. And uh, the nice part uh, is that uh, Replacing this uh, with an actual number is not done by the, uh, by the parser, but, uh, by, but by the housekeeping block here. So this means that if you write a new parser, you have this feature for free. And uh, the other part I wanted to show you that's uh, more or less uh, an anecdote, but uh, it's worth uh, saying. You see here the deliverable, and uh, the date, uh, it has three dates. 12 months, one, one year, two years, three years. That's uh, reasonable because sometimes, in this case, for example, is uh, a report. During the project, you have few reports during the project. So it makes sense to have uh, some kind of periodic deliverable. At the beginning, I didn't uh, take care about this. And uh, the deliverable just had one date. Okay? And this uh, was a design, de de design decision that was uh, quite deeply inserted into the code because uh, it was part and in sense of the model of the project that I had in mind. Then, you, wh while writing the project, uh, it uh, came out that uh, there are also periodic deliverable. I had to change this. And this uh, 
required quite a deep change in the hippocode because, uh, as I told you, it was uh, part of the model that I used to do the code. Time to do the change, half a day. <laughs> I was impressed. You know, I don't want to do that. I don't know. It's tomorrow. It's half a day. After, at the end, it uh, compiles, it runs, and it works. That's what uh, I love about ADA. <laughs> and uh, here, process of plugin. This is the output. I'm not going to detail. It's the same stuff as before. And uh, there are, uh, at the moment, two plugins for the output. One is dump, as you can imagine, is for debugging purposes. The other produces a lot of LaTeX files. And uh, the high-level aesthetic uh, is coded inside the other code. The most of the aesthetic is coded as uh, LaTeX macros. Uh, but the high-level structure is inside the other. And that is not good. I mean, as long as I was the only user, that's fine. No problem. If I want to make it available to other people, so. So I want to introduce this template-based uh, approach, and, uh, but this is still a work in progress. Just that, that you know that uh, the latter plugin is what produces this. This, 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 and this. This is actually a LaTeX feature. Was automatically produced from this. No, from this. And uh, let me tell you, it saved me lots of work. <laughs> lots. Uh, also including the work done to, to write this. So the new template out of the processor will be template-based. This is just a taste of the syntax. Very PHP-like as a philosophy, but uh, the language of the template, uh, I guess, uh, you feel at home, OK? So work in progress. Uh, more documentation. Actually, it's not so bad. Uh, yes, I want to add markdown inside the content. Let's go back here. Uh, here, you see. Yeah, work package. This is kind of a tribute of the work package. And this is the content. As you can see, this is LaTeX. I want to move to Markdown in order to allow for different output format, of course. And uh, OK, and the template based the processor. OK, so this is the almost last slide. Some pointer to the project, to myself. And uh, no, no, no. What, what are you doing? Anule. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and that's all. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really, honestly. I, this is something that uh, mostly I wrote first for myself. You know, the open, the open source stuff started from when you started to try to scratch your, your itch. I published on GitHub. I guess that maybe someone else could be useful for, uh, for that. Uh, that's it. I guess it's a very, it's a, an application and uh, also a very niche application. Okay, it's not just uh, I don't know an editor. That's uh, why this. Uh, if you ever wrote a uh, European project, uh, you know that this can save you at least at me save the, to me a lot, lots of work. <laughs> Maybe not much as a question, more of an observation. The uh, AU proposal 
work so much that you're really painful that you actually decide to <laughs> write the whole stuff. On the other hand, you know, there's MS Project that kind of does something similar, so I think there might actually be more, it might be less of a niche market than you think if you're, if you're talking outside of the EU corporation. You know, projects are delivered, you know, project plans are delivered to all kinds of managers all the time. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, they all have the same <laughs> dependencies and issues. Uh, so the observation was that maybe if uh, it's outside of European proposal, it's uh, maybe less than an issue. Maybe. Uh, less than niche, I mean. Yeah. Because you said niche market. So, yeah, it looks at it at first glance. But on the other hand, there's MS Project and they make big money with it. Uh, you know, I come from the university, so I'm used to write projects uh, for research proposals. And this is for European Union, but also for Italian um, proposals. It's uh, yeah. more or less the same. And uh, I mean, you can do it, okay? And uh, let's face, let's be honest. Uh, it was also fun to write the code. Yeah, <laughs> so that uh, that uh, was a part of the motivation. <laughs> and uh, it was much more fun writing the code than can try to. <laughs> exactly. Side effect of the code, it does the work for you. Yes. And you have fun doing it. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I know, I, I guess that maybe the same could be useful for someone else, at least in the university. You see, there also there is another fact that uh, it produces a lot of code, and usually European pro uh, proposals are writing, written in Word. Anyway, he maybe you could write, uh, uh, someone else could, could write uh, a processor for uh, open, uh, open document. So you can get open document format that you include inside the different proposal. I mean, this, of course, is, by the way, this also is uh, quite young. Uh, I submitted the project on September of last year. So this is uh, very, very, very young. Of course, it's uh, suited for m to myself because yeah. uh, I wrote f trying to scratch a problem of mine. <laughs> but uh, if uh, there is input from someone else and can be useful to someone else, I will be happy. And you can uh, integrate the dependencies between the task and uh, when you write uh, the yeah. Yes, uh, uh, there is a. Sometimes it's not automatic. It, you said yes. that from Martin. Yes, uh, as the. Before, but uh, sometimes you have to, sometimes to change it because this is the actual component, so it's what you need for it. No, and uh, if you. If you uh, to do an additional subtask, and then. Uh, yes, so the. The question is uh, if uh, it's possible to integrate the dependence for task. Yes, it's, uh, it's almost automatic in this case uh, with the data uh, expression. So you say. This task uh, begins when this one ends. There is not yet, uh, I planned to do, then I discovered that the, the date was enough, uh, uh, a formal dependencies. So to the, this task depends on that one. Mm -hmm. the, um, there is not, uh, but if you look into the code, uh, you see that there is some kind of placeholder to put this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that, in my opinion, that's it was the most uh, useful part because uh, otherwise my, exper my, my experience in uh, European project is that uh, you are at a point and you say okay freeze it don't change anything <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't ever try to think about changing <laughs> because uh, it's, uh, in this case I could change an anything at the, the, the very last day Okay. Thank you. You're welcome.